politics has consequences. And, uh, and these are uh, deeply personal and at times because that they are the sort of the, the private the private suffering of individuals, we don't we don't we don't know about them when we don't hear of them often enough. But if we do, then it brings home to the, the idea uh, that we have to be vigilant uh, about uh, the kind of politics that may have serious consequences for uh, for people, uh, for individuals and their families. The reports from various com- com- camp commandants had indicated that uh, that the guards were uh, were. Uh, not only simply overworked, but they failed to understand what they were doing here, sort of overseeing these civilian prisoners of war who obviously, to their mind, posed no threat, but in effect were being subject to the kind of military regime that would be reserved for combatants. And there's a disconnect here. And some of these characters uh, sort of objected to this. And certainly from the point of their original intent to volunteer for king and country, that they were now in the middle of nowhere overseeing these unfortunates just didn't make sense. And so you have these recruiting officers that would go to these internment camps and they, you know, a good half of them would, would ask to be liberated from these camps. These are the guards, uh, would ask to be liberated from these camps. And, uh, some of them, their wish fulfilled, uh, would wind up on the Western front. And there was records of some of these internee guards or internment guards, uh, losing their lives on the Western Front, um, knowing full well uh, what awaited them on the Western Front. It was better than what was, what was, uh, what was here. But with respect to, the, um, you know, to these internees, countless cases were on record where, where individuals demonstrated uh, the fact that they, uh, that they were taking, taken ill because of the circumstances in which they found themselves. Um, there's a, one case where a, a fellow by the name of Penzawater, uh, who uh, escaped from the internment camp five times, uh, the last time under a hail of bullets, always to return. But they uh, they understood that uh, that the camp environs only increased in his agitation, and they asked that he be taken away to an asyl- asylum for, for treatment, if you will. But the internment authorities deemed otherwise. And so uh, it was not until um, there was a, an incident in one of the camps where he took a, uh, a stave and uh, started beating another prisoner almost to death. Uh, that uh, they uh, they seized him and eventually uh, sent him to off, off to uh, an insane asylum in Pinoca, Alberta. There are other instances where individuals uh, took their own lives, uh, uh, internees who had t- taken their own lives. Uh, uh, one fellow by the name of Luca Budak, uh, who increasingly uh, showed uh, signs of distress, uh, and during the course of a month, uh, the prison guards ultimately uh, put him in an isolation cell, uh, presumably for his own protection. And there, he was able to manage to secure a razor, and he cut his own throat, and then he cut his uh, his bowels, or rather, he cut his. Uh, his uh, stomach open and the bowel spilling open. And for that matter, um, there are instances where guards uh, took their own lives. They would go into behind uh, uh, in Banff, um, a resident guard there uh, went home and uh, went behind uh, his uh, residence where he lived in the city, in the town of Banff and, uh, and committed suicide. Um, And the argument was that, um, Stress, stress, stress. Uh, that was the coroner's report. 